Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Estate Planning Nightmares and How to Avoid Them. I'm your host, John Braddock, author of Click Here When I Die and founder of My Life and Wishes, The Legacy Vault, an online planning and document storage solution created to make things easier for those you love. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Kylie Malott. Kylie is an experienced Medicare and financial services professional who's committed to making a real difference in the lives of her clients. Let me share just a little bit about Kylie with you. She grew up on a farm in Eastern Washington with five siblings. She learned early on about hard work, teamwork, and resilience, qualities that have guided her throughout her career. After earning her bachelor's degree in business and marketing from Boise State, she ventured into project management before finding her calling in the insurance and financial services field in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. She now owns and leads her own company alongside her partners, Ryan Anderson and Angelique Madsen, focusing on providing customized solutions in Medicare and financial security for her clients. Kylie's dedication to helping clients feel understood, valued, secure, makes her the ideal guest for today's episode. So today we'll dive into the world of Medicare and financial planning, discuss the challenges that arise in estate planning related to healthcare and long-term security, and hear Kylie's advice on avoiding common pitfalls. Welcome, Kylie. Hey, thank you so much, John. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. Uh, I'm super happy to have you on. So let's just jump right in. Um, Kylie, thanks again so much for joining us today. Could you start by sharing maybe just a bit about your background, uh, what initially inspired you to pursue a career in Medicare and financial services? Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, I was in Eastern Washington, had just graduated from Boise State. And for five years, I was a project manager for a custom home builder in Eastern Washington. And I learned a lot in that five years. Um, but I also learned, I mean, those were also my formative years, right? I was in my early 20s trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I really liked the path that we were going on. And I really liked what I was doing. Um, that company actually just took a turn and they started doing more commercial. And that wasn't uh, as interesting to me as the residential had been. So I decided to put some feelers out there and I was just looking and insurance came up and my grandmother was actually in insurance. She worked uh, for Aflac. And I remember as a little girl going into her office and she had plaques everywhere. And I mean, it was a little office. I'm not saying anything like that but it was it was a little office and she just had plaques and she was successful and I remember her telling me just like how much she really enjoyed helping other people and the relationships of these family close friends that I had were all from when she worked insurance and she just helped them and then invited them home for dinner because that's who my grandma was and she was in a small town so that when I saw that it kind of it really took me back to my roots, I guess. And I thought, you know what? That that could be a good fit for me. And the more I looked into it, uh, this career is for people who want a career and not a job, right? So it gives you a path. I didn't want to have to ask permission to go to my son's baseball game. I didn't want to ask permission if I could coach his game and get off work early. I wanted some flexibility in my own schedule. Um and so this kind of just w an entrepreneurship runs in my family. I have five siblings and believe it or not, we're all self-employed. So my parents have done something right, I guess, <laughs> or they, they just haven't raised any followers. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, that's really, I saw an ad and I took it. I thought my personality matched up well and my goals aligned. And then that's where I actually met one of my partners to this day, um, both of them, Ryan Ryan Anderson and Angelique Madsen. They were at that um, IMO that I was with at, at that agency. So they were really helped get my feet off the ground and kind of give me direction on what I wanted the next five or 10 years of my life to look like. So yeah, that's how it got, that's how it all got started. Well, that sounds great. And everyone needs a mentor. So it's nice that you, yes. you met Ryan and Angelique. Uh, in that process. And, uh, and grandma sounds awesome. And did, yes. so I gotta, I have to ask, you know, did she, uh, you know, bring you some of those little ass ducks? <laughs> you know what? She did have one in her office and we played with it all the time. So yes, she, 
yeah, she's a good woman and, and definitely someone I'm lucky. And I know that she is definitely a woman that you want to aspire to be like, I I've been very blessed to have the family that I do and, and good people and good, strong women around me. So she's definitely one of them. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, as an aside, my, uh, uh, my father was in the insurance business and my grandfather before him was the insurance business. In fact, the, the, the family business, the Braddock agency actually still survives in Medford, New Jersey. Um, wow. and it was started in the 1920s. Um, and That's it was incredible. Right. It was my, uh, uh, seeing my dad and, and what he did and my grandfather particularly in insurance and that desire to help people to protect, you know, yeah. the things that matter most. Yeah. And, um, and that's what led me into my career. And, uh, and I think an awful lot of successful insurance people like yourself, that's, that's what gets them there. Because as you know, uh, you know, if a hundred insurance people start out in the career two years from now, there's only going to be about 10 of them left. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. It's definitely not for the weak. I know I I'll be the first to say that. It when I first got in, it was tough. But I did you have to have a mentality, right? It just there's a certain mentality that you have to have and I grew up with we don't we don't quit. So that helps. Um and also having a mentor like you said was everything. Back end support is everything because this this career path is very different than a W-2. Like you can be horrible at your job for two weeks and still collect a, a paycheck at the end. You <laughs> cannot be horrible at, at you, this craft and still expect a paycheck at the end. Like I am improving myself all the time. I'm re I read articles, books. I listen to podcasts. I host a podcast. I'm constantly having conversations within the field. And I think that's where a lot of agents fall short is they think, well, I'm independent, and so that means I can do what I want. Although that's true, there's also a pitfall with that, right? You do need some accountability and some support on the back end to help you. And that's how I got into the annuity business, really. We were a Medicare house, and um, Doug McDermott came into the office because he was the trainer for that IMO at the time. And he said, if you use these word sentences and phrases and you implement these systems into your sales process – you will be successful and you will uncover opportunities. And I was a baby agent at the time. And I mean baby. I think I was there for three or four weeks. Hadn't been on a single solo appointment yet. Um, so very eager to learn. And when you have someone such as Doug come into the room and say, hey, this is how I've made my living. And I've been doing this for 40 years. And John, you know exactly what it takes to be in this business for 40 years. That's longevity that people aspire to have. So I said, all right, let's do it. So I followed him and I did exactly what he told me to. And I was able to close a million my first year at that IMO. So that wow. really lit a fire under me. And I continued to have a close relationship with Doug. And now fast forward five years, we work together at Annuity Fundamentals. So it's crazy how life can just turn out sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, that's amazing. And, and you're right, because a lot of people get into it and, you know, they, they think, you know, Hey, freedom. Um, yep. but with having freedom and flexibility comes a lot of, uh, responsibility, mm -hmm. determination, uh, and, and the ability to get up and do the right things each day. And, uh, yeah. and I like what you said about him, you know, suggesting here, are the kind of things to say and what, for the audience that, you know, because because I am an insurance guy for 35 years, right? And, you know, there's a lot of people out there think, oh, man, an insurance people are trying to tell me something. I, I need you to make an informed decision if you're a client. Yeah. And by me asking the right questions, as you indicated, Doug had guided you the right questions. You get people to think about things that maybe they haven't thought about yes. um, that can be critical. Uh, to their future. So that is really awesome. Congratulations on your successes. Thank you. I, I can't take all the credit. I had incredible support around me between Doug and Ryan and Angelique and the team back at that office. I really had a, a great group of people around me to encourage me to, to always better myself. I'm competitive by nature. So that does help. Uh, 
but I definitely had a lot of people around me lifting me up, telling me all the good things, right? You need people to say, hey, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Because I remember going in during just the interview process and Ryan was very frank with me. And he said, listen, the first year is tough. I, I, it's like crawling over broken glass, tough. And for me, some, I, I can see how some people could hear that and be like, oh yeah, that's so not for me. Right. Cause I could say that about like skiing in the rain, just not for me. Right. I'm not doing that. <laughs> but when I'm warned like, Hey, this is going to be tough, but you can do it. Okay. That's all I need. There, there is, you have to have some grit because it isn't easy. Like I said, you could be terrible for two weeks, still get a paycheck. You can't be terrible for two weeks here. You're always improving, always trying to get to the next appointment, trying to fill your calendar, trying to look for things to do. And there's a lot to do. It's just really getting your brain to calm down and say, okay, where's my priorities and start some goal setting. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And and you do, you're a great team. I don't know Angelique. I do know Ryan. Ryan and I met in Austin, Texas back in, uh, yeah. in August this year. Um, you guys had me on your podcast, which I think gets released later this year, which, yep. uh, I thank you for, um, and, uh, and of course you're saying nice things about Ryan. I'm going to have Ryan on this podcast in about two weeks. And so I'll see if he, uh, speaks as nicely about you. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't, we're, we're fighting. <laughs> but yeah, I don't usually edit. Uh, any podcast episodes because my podcast is the audience know this is the real people having a real conversation i love that i feel but, like that's super fair but hopefully i won't have to edit him yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell me this what do you find um are the most common misconceptions that people have you know about medicare and 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 financial planning you know what that's a great question and there are a few so typically some people might think that it's going to work just like their employer plan and nothing's really going to change. Uh, some people think this is the biggest one that I feel like if I had like a giant red flag and I could wave it above my head, I would long-term care. Many people think that Medicare will, oh, that's fine. I have Medicare. It's going to take care of my long-term care. And that terrifies me t down to my core. Because, I mean, the government says, well, right, government says, I use air quotes there, but they do say about 70% of us will need some sort of long-term care. But what they don't say is that the 30% are going to be the ones taking care of the 70%. So 100% of people in some way, shape, or form is going to be affected by long-term care. So when they think that Medicare helps with that, uh, that's a big misconception. I think the difference between um, Advantage plans and Medicare supplements, a lot of people don't know that there's a difference because uh, you only see Advantage plans and Part C advertised. So I have seen a lot of people, and that can be a big deal, especially for where I live. I live in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which is at the tippy top of the panhandle. And there's a lot of small communities here, rural areas that being on an advantage plan or a part C doesn't bode well for them, right? Because then they're really locked in and they can't go outside and we're close to the border. So it'd be nice to go into Washington if they needed to, but, um, a lot of people don't know the difference. So I would say that, that, uh, is, a is a big deal. And a lot of education goes into that as well. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, that, it really brings something, you know, to mind and, and brings a home as, as the audience know, I talk with a lot of estate planning attorneys and those kinds mm -hmm. of things. And, and, and much like talking with, you know, a, a financial professional, it's the same thing. It's like, there are choices, there are options out there, be it yeah. wills or trusts or how you're going to yep. set things up versus, you know, the advantage plans and, and these things. And unless you get the guidance from a professional advisor, you know, you, you may be making some big mistakes if you just try and do it all on your own. Absolutely. I, 10 out of 10 recommend getting an agent. I mean, I've never once, unfortunately, the five years I've been doing this, no one's ever given me money, right? I've never exchanged money back and forth. 
So I feel like having someone be your advocate can be huge for you. Why do you need to worry about every little thing when I can have an agent worry about that for me? And then once a year we get together and she tells me the things that are going to affect my life, right? Because we're inundated with information all the time. But what actually affects me? That's what people care about. And so that's what I really loved and enjoyed about doing and running Medicare appointments was having a natural conversation from going from health to wealth because it is all integrated. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, I Medicare, I need to know how much money you have in order to say, what direction are we going to go with Medicare? Because a supplemental is different than a part C. And if you have the means and depending on your health, I mean, it depends, right? Everything is individual, but I, I need to see a full picture. And there's a lot of conversations that I have with clients and with agents that I train. And we talk about how to get to retirement all the time. I've got an IRA for retirement. Oh, yep. I've got 401k. I'm saving for retirement. I'm going to put this away for retirement. This is, you know what I mean? We have a lot of for retirement conversations, but when I'm sitting in front of somebody and they're 65 and they're saying, okay, I'm here. The next words are always the same. Now what? Rarely do they have the conversation how to get through retirement because unfortunately, that's also a conversation that leads them to the end of their life. And people are uncomfortable with that. Rightfully so. Death is death. No matter what you feel, death is a, a subject that can be uncomfortable for most. And so when you're sitting in front of them and you're talking about Medicare, they're understanding the gravity of the situation because their entire life is changing. Like, yes, it's a celebration. Like, I don't have to work anymore. But that celebration is quickly put out just like a match because they're thinking, ooh, now what? I'm not working. So what? A, what am I going to do with my day? And B, I hope I have enough money to get me through. And how do I know what's going to get me through? Because I have no idea how long I'm going to live. So they're playing kind of this like cat and mouse game with their with their retirement accounts, right? I talk about it all the time with, with withdrawal rate risk. Okay, it's a double-edged sword. A, you don't want to take out too much money and then run out. And then B, you want you don't want to take out you don't want to not take out money and then have your lifestyle be poor and you didn't take the trip because you were too scared or you didn't know where your paycheck next paycheck was going to come in. So when you're sitting down as a Medicare agent, it's such a beautiful opportunity to really talk to people and say, hey, I actually don't just work in Medicare. I am an asset protector from health to wealth. Let's get into that conversation and see what that looks like, because for majority of Americans, they don't have a financial advisor. They have less than a million dollars in the bank and they're going into retirement saying, I hope it works. And hope is a great thing to have, but it is not a solid plan. So that's what that's what I train my agents and that's what I do is try and help put a plan in place. Yeah. And, you know, as you mentioned, too, um, which, you know, the, the point can't be driven home uh, hard enough that, that Medicare is not long term care. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to take care of that. And when, when, when you're 65 and maybe you have a million dollars and you think that money is going to last and you have no idea how long you're going to live, um, one illness or one incapacity that yep. puts you into a nursing situation, uh, assisted living, those kind of things, yep. that can take all your money and it can take it really, really fast. So, you know, I'll I, I give you an example. My father today, we are recording this on Wednesday, November 6th, is his 93rd birthday. It's incredible. Happy birthday out there, dad. I know. Yes. Uh, happy my birthday. Mom, my mom be listening and she'll share that. Um, and I spoke with him today and he and my mom, and she's uh, 87. Sorry, mom. I just told you age. Um, uh, they still live alone on their own. They're doing great. But uh, they always plan to make sure they had the money. They made sure they had long-term care insurance to cover things that happened and and done those things. And they worked with professional advisors. They didn't try to do it on their own. Yeah. Um, so, and again, we don't have that crystal ball. You know how long we're going to live. Um, 
it's like we discussed on on your podcast uh, you were asking about uh, the legacy vault and mm-hmm. you know why it's important and those kind of things and you know we we talked in in depth about that um but we also talked in depth about why don't people like do this stuff and uh and people think oh well i have time to do that later well that's the one thing we don't know if we have or not right yeah is is the time to do it so so transitioning into that a little bit you had shared uh with me uh, a few weeks back um that you've uh personally experienced you know some loss uh, of loved yeah. ones and some of the challenges and since i call the show estate planning nightmares at least we have to you know talk about something scary but avoidable. oh my gosh something scary when it comes to estate planning where do we start john where do we start <laughs> right right i mean at the end of the day the biggest scary thing is losing a loved one that's just that's that's plain and simple that's right there cuz it's emotion and what people fail to have is a clear mind during an emotional state. And so when you were talking about my life's wishes and just the vault, it was like everything clicked into place. Like, oh my gosh, if my family would have had something like that, uh, how nice would that have been? Because I I was um, in my early 20s and my grandma was she had health issues pretty much my whole life. She was about, when I was in junior high before, so elementary through junior high, she was really great. Very active, very just quick. Um, and I don't know, just had a great time with my grandmother. And then she fell in the bathtub and broke her back. And I was in about junior high and we were from a small town and there was no, I don't know if there was no physical therapy or my parents, my mom and her sister just decided that they weren't going to push for that. And if you're not getting stronger, right, every single day, you get weaker. And so that happened to my grandma and she just never bounced back and she lived in bed for far too long. And she would say the same thing. And when I'd go visit her, she'd say, I just, this isn't a life. Like I'm just laying here, letting people take care of me. And then And that was, so it wasn't a surprise when she passed, we were all there. It was a beautiful, it was, it was a beautiful transition. So we're prepared. It's been a long time. And still when that moment happened, it was like, okay, now what? Right. And I remember my mom and my aunt crying and mourning all the while trying to find the phone numbers to people that they needed to call. And I've been in many appointments. I've had it happen in my own family. I'm the baby of the babies. So my parents are the babies and I'm the baby. And so I've, I've experienced a lot of passing. So I've, I've had this situation come up a lot. So now I feel like my parents have a good system because they've had to do it quite a few times, but more often than not, you're going through it for the first time. Who do you call first? Okay. Right. And maybe your let's say your husband was super organized and he has everything written down to a T. Where is it written down? Do you have the password to the the folder that it's in? Because it's all your private information. So of course he password protected it. Do you have that? What fo- there's just so much to to do when someone passes. It's not just, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're gone. It's I got to talk to the funeral home. I, what about life insurance? Who was their agent? What do I do with Medicare? What about social security? Do I call them? And when does that happen? I mean, then the mind just keeps going. And just because they die don't mean their bills stop, right? <laughs> that I it was like, hey, no one lives here anymore. Stop sending the power bill. But it it's all someone didn't call. And so when you were like, yeah, we have all of that information in one place, I was like, this is genius and everyone should have it. Uh, yeah, you know, that's, it's true. And, you know, when we first started um, the company back in 2016, so you know, about eight and a half years now, um, one of the first thoughts uh, was our biggest challenge is going to be uh, getting people to understand what the problem is because most people until they have the problem yep don't know they're going to have the problem and then you know it's obviously too late and as you say you know 
when someone dies, you know, the 24, 48, 72 hours, you're running on sheer adrenaline. You're in shock. Um, you're doing the best you can, you know, talking to, you know, a funeral home. Is it going to be a religious ceremony? You know, whatever. Do we call the pastor, the rabbi, priest? Um, are we going to have a, <laughs> are we have a luncheon after? Um, yep. We got to put together memory boards. We got, and, and, and so you just, you struggle to get all through right. it, right? And it's after uh, the loved one is finally laid to rest when the reality is. Mm -hmm. That's when the challenges actually start. Like you say, all right, you know, just paid $14,000 for a funeral on my credit card. Um, was there life insurance? Where are all the assets located? How do we find it? Um, you know, we might not even know uh, within a few days unless someone would organize it. Do they have a will or a trust? Um, we got to call an estate planning attorney because, you know, there's going to there's gonna be probate and there's going to be other things that are going to have to occur. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's daunting well, and overwhelming. Just to that point, do you know how, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but it's in the millions of dollars that people have they have life insurance but their loved ones didn't know and it was never collected millions of dollars because they didn't know uh, because let me uh, more let me often than not you go that. and look where is their policy i don't know they don't have yeah. a policy they don't have a person that they have a card on the uh, fridge nothing so yeah that's yeah i can't imagine spending fourteen thousand dollars and then being like well I guess there was no life insurance. And if there was, I don't know how to find it. How are we going to find that? Yeah. You know, and actually your, your number is uh, close to accurate, except you need to add a B to it because the last study I saw is that uh, in excess of $1 billion in life insurance has gone unclaimed simply because beneficiaries didn't know they were a beneficiary. And as I used to tell people uh, in my career uh, prior to being in technology, when I was in insurance, is like life insurance is like an amazing tool and everybody needs it. Uh, I don't care who you are. You need life insurance. Yeah. Even if you're Bill Gates. Bill Gates has life insurance. He's got oh, it for Bill Gates totally has a totally different. a lot of life insurance. Totally different reason than we yeah. have ours, right? Um, but it's only good if someone knows about it. Yep. So it's like I tell people, you know, well, I'm not sure, you know, where the policy is, that kind of stuff. Well, great. That's going to make it really hard for your family. But at least let family know. Say, I have a life insurance policy with Prudential. They will find that. Yeah. <laughs> right? At least give them some kind of roadmap, right? You know what people are, though, John? They're very private. They're not telling anybody what they have. I mean, sheesh, I've been in a lot of appointments where I'm like, hey, you do know I'm not your child. Like, I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to steal your money. Like, I'm not <laughs> wanting you to die. I'm just saying, hey, let me help you put it together a plan because it's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're very it's private. That, it's that kind of, you know, advice too. You know, it's like, um, as I talk about with, with estate planning and stuff, you know, it's, it's really important if you're going to have a trust, I mean, it's designed to, uh, uh, preserve assets, transfer wealth and keep families out of court. Right. Yep. Um, but the family still has to find everything and locate things and track everything down. And so a professional advisor like yourself or the attorneys that we work with by, Working with the clients and giving them the advice to make sure this stuff is secure somewhere and people can have easy access shows that you care about what the experience is going to be like for their family. Yeah. After the fact, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, because many people don't think about it on their own. When I talk with people all the time and I just start saying, uh, you know, you have more digital identities than you think. And I go through the list A to Z. Amazon to Zoom, you know, your Gmail, Hulu, Netflix, YouTube TV, Sirius yep. XM Radio, Pandora. Yeah, you can just keep going on and appeal like, oh my gosh, yeah. And all that stuff's on auto pay or recurring pay. Yep. And uh, yeah, so we need family to take that stuff down. 
Yeah, so, no, I think having that all in one place, I mean, even just we're we're one section, right? As Medicare agents, as life agents, we're just one section of somebody's life. But you're absolutely right. When you really think about their digital fr- footprint, that can be super overwhelming. But I remember, honestly, when you were talking, it really hit me. I had a client and she was her husband had passed maybe eight or 10 years before she was in on like Medicare age. And so she was very like adamant that everything was very organized because she had just gone through it herself. So she had two kids and she's like, okay, Kylie, I want like a receipt because she, she went through and got Medicare and then she got um, an indemnity policy and then she got a life insurance policy and then she even got an annuity. So we had done business together and I had helped her with her distribution plan. And she said one thing that she was just very adamant about is I want my kids to know all of it. Like I need, I want copies for each child. So I want three copies, one for me and one for my two boys. And like, she wanted them to know everything because I think she had had a really traumatizing experience with her husband, her late husband. I think she didn't have what she needed and it wasn't, it was a hard process when I think there was a lot of things that we can do to prepare, right? You can prepare. So the process, so it's, so it's easier um, and I think she, her husband wasn't prepared. Obviously when you, you die unexpectedly, you're not, but there's so many people, even my age who don't have life insurance, who are not prepared at all. And life is precious. And we know that. And to have one space where you have a receipt and her kids can go log on and say, all right, mom has an annuity here. She's got life insurance. This is her policy number. This is her agent. This is the phone number. What a blessing. What a blessing. That would be incredible. Yeah. Makes it so much easier for family than yeah. going on the morbid scavenger hunt, which is what I refer to as my kids having to come through and go into my office and dig through all dead dad's drawers looking. And to that's what they're going to they do. Find. That's absolutely what they, that's, that's their, your natural. What do I do next? Well, let's go through his office. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately it happens to far too many people. Well, hey, as we're winding down in time, let me let me let me shift. We'll you know not talk about death, although that's where I spend most of my life. Um, so, yeah, you know, you're a brilliant young woman. You're highly successful. Um, starting a company is no small feat. How did you and your partners, you know, Ryan and Angelique, decide to create your own business and and utilizing each other's strength to 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 do what you do and accomplish what you accomplish? You know what? That's that's a great question. Um, huh, that's a great question. So we were at the, the same IMO and uh, I don't know. Sometimes you just feel like you're outgrowing something. And that was a great IMO. I mean, I have nothing negative to say about them. Um, I enjoyed my time there. I just also was feeling constricted because it was a hybrid Um, I wasn't independent, but I wasn't captive either. So it was kind of a hybrid situation. And I just felt like I could do more differently. Uh, And that's just, that's how I'll leave it. I just wanted to do things a bit differently. And I found people that were like-minded. And Angelique and I actually went off first and we went off on our own. And then Later down the road, Ryan joined us. Um, it was a few months after, about six months after we had left, Ryan Ryan actually left too. And then he joined forces with us and we, we just kind of hit the ground running. We knew our strengths and we had worked together pretty much side by side for four years, three years at that IMO, three years at that IMO. And, and I'm meaning like side by side with cases, we did work shops together. Angelique and I were partners and we did workshops for Medicare together back and forth. Um, so we were very much immersed in each other's business that way. And we were wildly successful. The three of us in that office were the top three performing agents and we had fun. I, 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 I will say I'm very lucky. I really love the people I work with. Uh, Angelique, we call each other every day and it's always, Hey, bestie, like, Hey, bestie, what's going on today? And we go through the day 
and same with Ryan and we meet all the time and it was just really finding people that are compatible with you that are like-minded and want to move forward. I heard this quote and it has stuck with me. And it was like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I had surrounded myself with the right people and those individuals. uh, It's great because I'm good at some things, but I I'm, I'm also inexperienced on others where Ryan, he brings the experience and where he falls short, I pick up and same with Angelique. So we're all very three, we're different, but we're, we're very good at our parts. And so we thought, well, my dad used to say with boys, especially one, you know, one boy, one brain, two boys, half a brain, three boys, no brain. But for us, it's like the three brains create one giant one. And we're, we're doing a, we work really well together and we have fun and, and, and we want the same things. So that that all clicked for me it was a no-brainer because it was like okay they want what i want we have the same goals we get along really well we have boundaries or the lack of um so yeah no i it was just more like hey this is fun let's just go out on our own and see what happens and so we did and we're we're all highly motivated people so quitting and losing wasn't really an option for us and Yeah. So that's really how it started. It was just saying, let's just see what we can do and see how far we can take this thing. And we were out doing our, I mean, selling ourselves, not ourselves, right? We were selling just the three of us. And then Doug McDermott approached Ryan and I, and the rest is history. No, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, that's, that's just it. You know, I mean, you have to love what you do, right? If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And, um, and when you break out on your own as an entrepreneur, um, going totally solo is hard. It's like you say, you can go fast, but you won't go as far. But bringing on other people uh, who you like, who you can work with, who you respect, who have their own skill sets, and everyone has their own unique abilities, that's when you know one plus one equals 27. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And we found that perfect trifecta. So it works really well for us. And, and yeah, I have a lot of fun every day. I I genuinely, did I think at the age of like eight or 10 that I wanted to be like an insurance agent when I grew up? Definitely (laughs) not. Like, I'm not going to lie. People who are listening, that's not what you dream of. You don't. I mean, unless you're John and your great grandfather and your grandfather and your dad, maybe that was a conversation in your household, but it definitely was not for me. Um, so, but I have turned it into something that I love and that is fun. And I, I couldn't imagine this is a season in my life for a reason. And I'm exactly where I need to be and want to be. And I'm, I'm really happy about it. Oh, that's awesome. And to be clear now, when I was that age, I mean, I wanted to be a, like most boys, you know, a firefighter or a police officer, or maybe a doctor. Um, but you know, life happens and, uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and now we're on. here john and now yeah, we're john. here exactly and i wouldn't have it any other way so Amen. hey kylie um thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your insights and experiences how can our audience reach out to you if they have questions or want to get a hold yeah. of you yeah Absolutely. So if you're an agent listening to this podcast and you're wanting to implement annuities, uh, look us up at annuityfundamentals.com. Like I said, Ryan and I, we do trainings on how to help Medicare agents go and get into the annuity space. So um, annuityfundamentals.com, you can book an exploratory phone call. Um, or if you are a client, uh, someone who is entering in or already in retirement, and you're looking for some advice on from health to wealth, you can go to retirementfundamentals.org and you can book a call with us through there. And like John said multiple times, and I appreciate you, John, we do have a podcast. So you can also look us up on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, um, and we're, we're out there sharing. Perfect. That'll be great. Hey, for our listeners, I, I hope this episode has been, uh, uh, highlighted the importance view of a well, well-rounded approach to financial estate planning. Uh, obviously, remember that Medicare planning is a crucial part of ensuring peace of mind in retirement and beyond. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Kylie and her work, 
I will include all of her information in the show notes, uh, as well as a link out to uh, her podcast. And as always, if you have enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and remember, your life is your legacy. So plan ahead, and we'll see you next time.